In this video I want to talk about interfaces and how they can be used with polymorphism. Let's start by considering this very first bullet point. Dog D equals new dog. What do we have here? We have a variable. The variable is named D and the variable type is dog. Now there's an object and the object type is also dog and we see that we are creating a new object of the class called dog because we are invoking the constructor here on the class called dog. We know we're invoking a constructor because we are preceding it with a new keyword. So in this case we have a variable type which is dog. We also have an object type which is dog. Now the variable and the object type in this example happen to be the same. But in object-oriented programming, that doesn't always have to be the case. As a matter of fact, in some cases it's to our advantage that they are not the same. So here's polymorphism in just a couple of sentences. The definition of polymorphism. Variable type tells you what methods you are allowed to call. So the variable type is the type of which we are declaring this variable here. In this case, it's dog. Variable type, what methods you are able to call. Think the word able is embedded in the word variable. Now the object type is what's on the right. The object type tells you what will happen when you call that method. So it's the objective of the method. So variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call. Object type tells you what will actually happen when you call those methods. And that's the definition of polymorphism. Now here's where polymorphism becomes very interesting. The variable type only needs to be a list of methods because that's all a variable type is doing is telling you what you're allowed to call. If it's anything more than a list of methods, if it's methods in their behavior, the variable type might have too much knowledge or too much information. So what is a list of methods? Well, an interface is essentially a list of methods, and I don't mean a user interface. I mean an interface in the object-oriented concept where it's just a, uh, something that can be used as a variable type, and it happens to be a list of methods. Now, what's the use of an interface? Well, a class can implement an interface, and an interface in that case is kind of like a contract. It's saying this is a list of methods, if any class implements me, it must provide a definition for all of these methods. Now, the advantage of this is if I have a class that implements an interface, then I can have a variable that is the interface type. I can create an object out of that class, and I can store the object from that class in the variable of the interface type. I know that might sound a bit confusing, but stay tuned because I have a few examples that will hopefully make it a bit easier to understand. Here's our example. Let's say we have an interface called iPet. Remember, an interface is just a list of methods, not behaviors of those methods. Now, any pet we have, just about any pet, is going to have to eat, whether it's a dog or a cat or something else. So we, need, we know that dog will implement iPet and cat will implement iPet because both dog and cat have to eat. So they're under contract to define what the behavior of eat is. It's going to be fairly similar, maybe a slightly different diet between a dog and a cat, maybe different portion sizes and other things like that. But we know they're both going to have to eat. Now a dog can bark, a cat can meow. A dog cannot meow and a cat cannot bark. So you see these methods bark is all the way down in the dog class and meow is all the way down in the cat class because we don't want to assume that meow applies to both dog and cat. We know that eat applies to both dog and cat, but not bark and meow. So interface iPet, class dog implements iPet, class uh, cat implements iPet. Let's consider that as we look at some examples. Which of these are legal? And remember the definition of polymorphism. Variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. Object type tells us what will actually happen when we call those methods. So for this to be true, then the object type, which is the thing which follows new, has to have all of the methods that are defined in the variable type, which is the type on the left. One other caveat, uh, we typically will not create an object out of an interface. An interface until Java 1.8 is just a list of methods. There's some default implementations that are available in Java 1.8 and greater, but let's just take the very simple approach and say, we cannot call a constructor on an interface. So given that, take a look at this list and ask yourself which of these are legal given our definition of polymorphism. Is the first one legal? iPet pet equals new iPet. 
Actually, that one is not legal because we cannot create an object out of an interface uh, because the object has to, uh, the object type has to provide definition for the methods in the interface. And we know up to 1.8, at Java 1.8, a, 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 an interface could not provide method definitions. Now let's look at number two. I pet pet equals new dog. Is that legal? That one is legal, and the reason is that dog implements iPet. If you remember the picture on the previous slide, we have a relationship between dog and iPet. This is fine. The object type can be the same as the variable type, or it can be a subclass of the variable type, or it can be a class that implements an interface, provided the, that the interface describes the variable type. So on that note, how about the next one? Is this legal? Sure enough, this one is legal because just like dog, cat implements iPet. Now the next one, is this legal? Can we make a variable type dog and an object type dog? Yeah, this is an easy one. Unless it's an abstract class, this one is legal because we know all the methods that are available on the, on the variable type dog are also available on the object type dog. Now what about the next one? Dog dog equals new cat. In this case, the variable type is dog. The object type is cat. Is this legal? This one is not legal because rem remember that dog has a method called bark and cat has a method called meow. But dog does not have a method called meow, cat does not have a method called bark. So in this case, our relationship is broken because we have a method on the variable type that does not exist on the object type. So this is not legal. It is okay to have methods on the object type that are not the variable type, not on the variable type, but vice versa is not legal. Reason being, the variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. The object type tells us what's going to happen when we, have, when we call those methods. If a variable uh, type has a method and the object type does not have that method, then we're saying that we're allowed to call that method on this variable, but the object is not prepared to handle it, and so that would break. How about the final example? Dog dog equals new iPad. Close, but no. We can't do that because, again, we don't want to call a constructor on an interface. So iPet pet equals new dog, that's fine because iPet is just our list of methods and dog implements iPet. But this relationship is not okay because uh, we don't want to call a constructor on an interface for one. And number two, remember that dog has a method called bark. iPet does not have a method called bark. So if this were legal, we would be indicating that we could call a method named bark on a variable dog, but the object type again does not have that method and it would not know what to do when we invoke that method. So let's see how we can use this to make an effective program. And this is something that we see a lot in many Java-based programs and many object-oriented programs. Consider this method signature, public void run, and it, in, it accepts a method parameter. The method parameter or parameter variable is named pet and it's a variable of type ipet. So given what we know from our previous, uh, our previous inheritance hierarchy, ipet, and then we implement that with a class called dog and a class called cat, uh, which, which, of these, which of these objects can we pass to the method? Can, can we pass dog dog equals new dog? Yes, we can do that because the object type here is dog we're storing it in a variable of type dog, but we're also okay to pass that in as a variable of type ipet because we know that dog implements the interface ipet. How about the next one, cat cat equals new cat? Is that legal? That is legal because here again, cat implements ipet. So if we are creating a, an object of type cat, we can pass that in uh, to a method that is expecting a variable of type ipet because we know that cat has at least all of the methods that are defined in this interface called ipet. Finally, let's consider fish fish equals new fish. Can we pass this one in? Well, yes, with a caveat, given that fish is a new class that implements ipet. And this is where interfaces get really handy because we've defined some type of uh, methods that we want a class to implement. And that allows us to create future classes that are going to implement this interface and then are going to implement all of the methods in the interface as well. So that's where interfaces are really nice because we can essentially add behavior on to classes that are going to get created into the future. 
We'll see this a lot in something called a callback, which is where we invoke a method from a class. This method might run as a different process or a different thread. In other words, we're firing it maybe on a different server or something like that. The method is going to do some work and then it wants to report back to us on how that work went. How's the method going to report back to us? Well, that's where a callback is handy, where what we do is uh, we have we, we basically invoke a method. This is an example from Android where we have a screen that's invoking a method to receive a request location updates for GPS. Now, this screen implements an interface called connection callbacks. The interface connection callbacks has a method called onConnected. So when we invoke request location updates from our screen GPS plant, we are passing a reference of this class into this method invocation. Now Fuse Location API, which is going to handle uh, acquiring a GPS satellite signal, once it has all of its connections together, it's going to invoke a method on that interface connection callbacks it's going to invoke a method called onConnected. And that's the way that the Fuse Location API tells our Android application, hey, thanks for all of your information. I'm now connected to a GPS satellite and I can now send you location data. So interfaces are frequently used in this callback mechanism where we may be making asynchronous call and then we're going to hear back from it later. You might have heard me call this a self-addressed stamped envelope in the past. So nonetheless, this is two uh, concepts which tend to be a bit confusing in introductory programming, and that's why it's worth revisiting in a more advanced class like ours, and that is polymorphism, which sounds more confusing than it really is, in interfaces, which are a major asset when they're combined with polymorphism. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you.